Hello. Hello. And and welcome to Locutors of Trek Season 2, Episode 5, where we're going to talk about art, the art of Star Trek, with a great artist in her own right, Jenny R. Johnson. Thanks for hey, everybody. Hi. Very nice to be here. Well, thank we you. Are your, we are your hosts, Devin and Dave. Indeed. Uh, Locutors of Trek and Plain Simple Tailors. So. <laughs> Many names. Indeed. We could call it techne, we could call it artist, we could call it kunst, but each of these things points to uh, some confection or combination of, I, I would argue, skill, intuition, uh, some sort of object of desire in the sense of the sort of the, the, the focus of the work. And then the execution itself, right? Mm. Um, and this is something that is human from the most ancient of times, right? What are the first things we find about human beings are flaked stone things mm -hmm. or maybe handprint on yeah. a cave wall. Absolutely. Uh, paint around. Uh, I mean, these things are really deep in our humanity. And so it's... Uh, it's wonderful to uh, to take a look at someone who's a, or with someone, sorry, who's a practicing <laughs> artist. Uh, right. As in that sense, the sort of like the whole dialectic of practice and theory going on all the time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Definitely. Uh, very welcome. Very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited. Uh, I mean, I, I, any chance I have to get a to, to talk about Star Trek anyway is like I'm completely down with. But Star Trek and art together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we we like to cycle through the themes and it's been fun and Right on. Uh yeah, this one. It, so the art of as you can see I'm a collector of fine art. Uh, I saw. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> a, a slight a slight gallery just over the top of your head there, I think. Uh, that's Indeed. fantastic. Ah. I'm looking for, I'm looking forward to your Deep Space 9 actually. I've been watching the progress and it's very Oh, exciting. yeah, yeah. That was actually cool watching the station come up on your uh, intro there because I've spent a uh, lot of time looking at it over the last a couple of weeks. So. You're probably nitpicking our station. You're like, <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> those ellipses, you know? Yeah. yeah. Just circle around those pylons one more. Time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know what? That was well uh focused intro there, Dave. So I might just derail us a minute. How about we do our famous segment, the, the, the space line? We're gonna get the space oh, yeah. line with you, Jenny. Okay. We're gonna give you a, quick, a, a, a quick rapid fire just to see ah, you stand. Love it. On your on your Star Trek here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, number one favorite show. TNG. Uh, favorite episode. Uh, changes, but Darmok right now. Yeah, that always changes. Yeah. Uh, favorite movie? Uh, ooh, Star Trek Six: First Contact, depending on my mood. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good answer. Uh, who's your favorite? Who's your captain? Uh, again, uh, it, ch it changes. P Picard is like home base, you know? But uh, like right yeah oh man like yeah they're so yeah, good like, like choosing your favorite child yes um, <laughs> favorite character oh um i want to say riker believe it or not riker data oh dax mm, God, raffi oh there's yeah all good characters yeah yeah Sorry, I'm not giving you single answers here. <laughs> like, that's okay. Yeah. That's it's funny. your space line. It's your space line. Thank you. Um, favorite villain? Oh, 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 oh. Um, I mean, is Q a villain? Is he? Yeah, I, I accept know. that. Oh, he certainly name. functions as. Yeah, a... I mean, he's a yeah, he's a that and Chang, General oh, Chang. I mean, yeah, uh, calling Morph microbrain is not very nice. I think. <laughs> I think what, uh, we at least know about Q that he'd be annoyed if you left him off a villain's list. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Yes, definitely. What do I have to do to get back on the list? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at exactly. it. Do I have to send Voyager back to the Delta Quadrant? I'll do it. 
Um, <laughs> favorite alien species? Mm, ooh, ooh, oh, God, how do you answer that? <laughs> I mean, I really like Klingons, but are they my favorite? I don't know. Oh, 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 I, yeah, I abstain. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> the logical answer, of course. Thank you. It's very, very politic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a planet you would most like to visit? Mm, I think, I mean, like, I feel like Rice is crowded, so Beta Z. <laughs> Riza is also, but everyone else has picked for the space line. So you're right, it's yeah. crowded in many ways. Yeah, Beta right. Z, interesting. Why beta yeah. Z? Because everyone can read your mind? Uh no, no, no. Actually, it's funny. It's because of the it's because of the matte paintings in um, oh, We're gonna talk in, about those. Yeah. Menage oh. Troy that that Menage Troy Troy, whatever. Right. Anyway, but it's yeah, like yeah, that has always captured my imagination. I like it. Oh man, those mm -hmm. things are one yeah. of the things that definitely formed my well, imagine mm -hmm. about, imagination about space as a youth, for sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll move on to those directly after yeah. the space line. Then, um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Favorite ship? The D. The D, baby. Forever. It's a good choice. Forever it's the so, D. It's just so comfortable. Oh God! It's just, and there's again, it's that, it's that, it's so ingrained in my brain that I, I, I don't know. There, there are other ships that just don't scratch that itch. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To this day, I will only buy beige furniture. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, and if you got your, if you're up on your TOS references, mm -hmm. uh, biggest, biggest Herbert. Oh, am I? Oh, biggest Herbert. Biggest Herbert. All right, help me. Well, you know the space hippies are like Herbert, Herbert, oh. Herbert. So it's just like who's who's the who's the lamest Star Trek character? <laughs> who's the biggest Herbert? <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh gosh! Um. Oh. Ooh. Mm. Oh. Ah. There's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Everybody chooses somebody different for this one. It's, oh this is gosh. the anti Riza question. Like. Oh wow. <laughs> Wow! Oh, this is at a left field, and I'm so because because I also like I do try to be very positive about in, like in my in my interactions with Star Trek. So even if someone is like sort of annoying in that respect, <laughs> I tend to be kind of like nice about it. Um, oh gosh! Me too when it comes to Star. Trek. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I mean Herbert, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm drawing That's a blank. Right. Yeah, nobody jumps out. Mm. Hey, Dave, you pick one for her. Well, I mean, you know, some 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 great Herberts uh, might include the guy that yells, "They're doing a countdown!" I love that guy. Oh, that it's guy. his only job ever. You know, uh, a bit of a Herbert. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I, mm -hmm. I that's a good him. pick. Uh, yeah, he's a bit of a deep cut Herbert. Yeah, so you know. that works. Out. All right. Well, since you guys talked about it, I thought we would talk about, of course, the oh. art that makes Star Trek. Oh yeah, go for it. I've got oh, one. All yep. right. It just yeah. Um, where no one has gone before, the TNG version. Uh, when they've got Dan Mandalone acting, and like the fires there, and he's like, no, no. <laughs> oh and yeah. Picard's like, imagine. Yeah. Anyway, that's yeah. No shade to Dan. Man alone, because he is the man. But he played a Herbert in that instant. In that moment, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a good choice. <laughs> a good one, man. Yeah, you have to make those single like line appearances work on Star Trek, or you could forever be labeled a Herbert. That's the exactly. thing. It's a lot of pressure. Exactly. Um. <laughs> But, yeah, okay, I thought we'd talk about the art that makes Star Trek, the art mm -hmm. within the Star Trek universe, but also the art that uh, has been inspired by Star Trek. But Fantastic. It, on the topic of the art that creates Star Trek, I do have a picture of some of those matte paintings here. Cause they are, <gasps> oh, man. I Throw love them, them as well. Like, I miss mm -hmm. them. Like, I, I understand it, it takes a lot of skill to make CGI, but there's something yeah. about it that Can just doesn't come alive i used to not know how they did this i thought they place. built these places oh my god i, I know was a kid i'm like did they just it was, build yeah these? i was like holy like, god they're, they're there but i yeah. used but like, i was uh, uh this this is one. one of the ones i love 
the whole oh, of the one. um the whole of the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. I was working in healthcare, and so of course we oh, were wow. doing medical rounds over Zoom. Mm -hmm. So the rest of my colleagues who were not necessarily Star Trek fans, <laughs> one was as I learned would always be like, "All right, where are you coming in from today, Dave?" Because I was uh -huh. finding these things so deadly after like that 900 set of rounds oh yeah I, I would just you know i would start coming in from like the bridge of the enterprise or decor profit mm -hmm. somewhere and uh at one point i came in on you know a, a, a galaxy type bridge and uh one of the charge nurses looked up and they were like holy crap is that the enterprise <laughs> nice yes <laughs> finally a compatriot mm -hmm. but yeah anyway sorry uh, oh, no, no, that's awesome. Uh, uh, you know, Planet N, which is, it, this has been a lot of places. Yes. Yeah. Maybe part of Angel One. That's a yep. bunch of places. Mm -hmm. The yeah, Starbase where Picard had his heart. Yeah, Ooh, that's not Angel place. One. Dang, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Angel One, too. <laughs> Some of these are oh, kind nice. of nice. Far point. Oh, there's a good one. Oh, oh God. Oh. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, the Klingon one. Is that, ones was, are is amazing. that, is, is that one, is that Kling? Yeah, that's Klingon, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's definitely Klingon. Yeah. God. Nobody else it. puts talons on their columns like that. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> I guess not. Like, some of these are just... Now, that's so great. Good. Is that the Terraform that... Station? Or is that the Masterpiece Society? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, no. I think uh, maybe? Uh, maybe? Or were they in a blockier structure? I may be thinking about... No, I'm thinking about Starship Mine. Where they're in the oh, room. I think you're. I, I, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hutch, call Hutch, me yeah. Hutch. A different place. Yeah, oh, that's right. Call me yeah, Hutch. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love Hutch. Call me Hutch. I love that episode. Yeah. One of the yeah, things that sticks one. out to me about these matte paintings is that mm -hmm. I feel like they come out so beautifully of the tradition of cover art. Oh um, yeah, science fiction and like the the the, the Nova magazine and those sorts of both pulp publications, but mm -hmm. also um, the, yeah, the more sort of printed novel stuff. Can you speak a bit about just about the, the sort of the, 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 I mean, is that high art? Is that low art when you're doing a matte painting like this with its providence? Like how do we, I mean, just it. <sighs> That hierarchy is who's to say, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's the same, you know, like what's art, what's craft, what's, and what, fine art, as far as I'm concerned is about, it's about like technique and um, materials and the, I don't know, like, and it also, I don't know, it kind of depends on how it hits the viewer, right? I, Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean, that gets into a whole thing about about like the artist's intent has, you know, in my opinion, no bearing on on what or how it's received by the audience. I think that's, you know, the sure. audience decides what art is. Basically, Wait, that's the point of escape, right? Where, where it yeah, artist. yeah, I think so. Yeah, but I guess and, I mean, part of my question mm -hmm. was like, you know, if we're thinking about say Farpoint, which comes out in like nineteen eighty seven. When a lot of those categories were still really, really firmly in place, yeah, uh, you know, it, I mean, there's lots of challenges to it, but mm -hmm. they were much more firmly in place than say they are today, for sure. You know what? Are, what? What do those map paintings do in that uh, for us in those? Kind of, you know, I mean, they're, I, mean I think, yeah, like, like I think attaching them in the art world, attaching science fiction to you know or fantasy to those immediately would like knock them down into a lower stratosphere in terms of what is considered you know fine art which is absolutely insane because you look at like ralph mccrory's star wars mats and the idea that those are somehow not as good as something that you know that's sitting in the metropolitan museum of art like it's it's bonkers to me yeah yeah you know but they're stuck in these schemas right absolutely i mean I, I mean the same way that you know the oscars just doesn't look at fantasy doesn't look at uh, science fiction like it's in, in you know in terms of art and, and and film similarly i think i think those same kind of prejudices exist 
Mm. I can relate to that sentiment as a comic fan, which you know. Exactly. Oh, yeah. oh, he picks up an X Men too. Nice. Well, I have yes. an X Men podcast as well. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> there might just be an issue of X Men always near at hand. I love it. That's amazing. Amazing. That's not wrong. I was going yeah, actually, now that I'm looking behind you, I'm like, oh, that is that, that's all X Men, isn't it? Oh, this is my X Men oh, background for that. Oh podcast, my God! So. What? <laughs> Amazing. Then, then I move back to Star Trek over I love here. It. They're my jams because I think they share a similar mm -hmm. sentiment. You know, it's like absolutely. Let's all just get along. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, mm -hmm. or be conquered. I like Klingons too. You know, it's okay. Yeah. To conquer yeah. people every now and then. <laughs> um. <laughs> so before we but, move um, I, further, can yeah. we just can you just say a few words about your own? practice just for just introduce oh people. yeah like where well, you got started what what you yeah. worked on what's your real yeah yeah i mean i am uh i'm <laughs> to the direction i know i know i know i've had a lot of practice i taught online for years so oh, good. um yeah anyway but i am uh i'm an oil painter i'm traditionally trained i went to the nova scotia college college of art and design um and i was encouraged to make art 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 um so i did a lot of how you say it you know, <laughs> right um you know coming out of coming out of school i graduated in 2006 i did a lot of work um traditional work i did a lot of landscapes i did a lot of portraits and um you know people's children and family pictures and sailboats you know we live in nova scotia um yeah a lot of a lot of sunsets and sailboats yeah with you know and 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 good reception and um but i just got to a point where i was like i want to paint something i like you know <laughs> um so i started off um i just decided well you know what i've never painted anything for myself that i've kept you know because i sort of everything i painted i sold which was not not a bad problem by the way um so i decided <laughs> to <laughs> there are worse problems to have i suppose yeah yeah so i decided to paint myself like a giant um tardis interior to put over my couch um oh, yeah okay. yeah and that kind of led to i started working on that and then my boyfriend at the time asked me to um hey you know what you, you can do these portraits would you be willing to maybe like you know do me one for my birthday i there, there's a scene from stand by me that i really love mm -hmm. and you know so i so i did that and then i finished the tardis and i put both of them online just on my facebook and people were like Ah, and I started thinking like, hey, this is cool. I'm having fun doing this. People really like it. And um, because H Halcon is here, um, the local, uh, for those who, yeah, for, for those who aren't here, the local sci-fi fantasy convention. Um, and it, it was suggested to me like, hey, you could make paintings and sell prints. And so I thought, you know, I started thinking about what, what are my favorites? I wanted to stick with that idea of like the things that mean something to me. I don't want to just, I didn't want to just paint anything, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I started with um, TNG and, you know, I, uh, Lord of the Rings and Back to the Future and um, Star Wars and, oh gosh, what else did I do that first year? Uh, Ripley from Alien. So, so I, I kind of... Yeah, I just kind of went through and thought about like iconic moments, iconic characters that mean something to me as, you know, as a baby Gen X, you know, like <laughs> um, with a millennial sister and, I, you know, like, like just, just the things We're that all I- all in that sphere here. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and all of a sudden that gave me this sort of new purpose with my art, because it wasn't just about, I mean, once I did these paintings and started like getting getting responses from people, again, the way that, because because my intention doesn't really mean anything, but in, in terms of how it's being received, mm -hmm. people connected to it, not just in terms of like, oh, I like that movie, but I remember seeing that scene for the first time. I remember watching this with my dad. I remember, you know, and I've had so many interactions like that with people over the years, especially about Star Trek. Oh my God. Um, and it's just 
been the coolest thing. Like, oh, it's just it, it's just amazing. So so for me, I'm making work that, you know, number one is is like the nostalgia factor, stuff that I'm interested in doing, but also things that are for me artistically challenging. I like mm -hmm. to take on um, you know, not just sort of like I want to recapture the moment, but I also want to make sure that I'm nailing like the light and the, you know, e even the things that the cameras do. I mean, that's one thing I've always loved about painting from photographs is incorporating the weird stuff the cameras can kind of like those effects, like the, the, the ways that things get bent by the lens or the ways that light kind of does cool things. So all, all of that. Yeah. So there's like a technical challenge involved in it as well for me that I'm interested well, I mean, in. Mm. Can, can, just from because Please, you don't yeah. have an exemplar of this behind your mm. what if we just talked about mm. the poker game here for a second? Right. Because I I I Frank, the first time I ever saw this at Davin's place, this was at a different yes. house. I came down and he was like, Look at this. <laughs> uh, I just got this thing, and I was like, holy crap. That's like it it it's like the it's like the imagination's eye view mm -hmm. of that group at that table almost, mm -hmm. right? Like the disembodied perspective. Uh yeah, was that done from a frame or is that it 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 is. It is. It's it's okay. the last frame of the show. The last frame mm. of them in the show. So like right before, I mean, actually the the image that I was working on was just barely um starting to fade into the the bulkhead as it was as, as it was passing through so there was like a little bit of a you could see like the windows kind of oh, anyway okay. yeah yeah so so i and that specific moment I, I i wanted to paint because i don't think there's ever been a moment in any other show or any other movie that has meant as much to me as that did that moment mm -hmm. um and it's like, and I, because <laughs> saying goodbye to that crew was not cool for me. I was very, very sad, like, like devastated. Yeah. And having that moment at the end of the show, I was able to like carry that forward, you know, knowing mm -hmm. that they'd all come together and they were a family and they were still together. And yes, there were movies, blah, blah, blah. But that's, but that's, yeah. yeah. We didn't know that at the time. Fun looking exactly. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, Dad, saying there, I missed that. Well, I was just saying, no, we didn't know that at the time. The exactly. Like, don't yeah, worry, yeah, the movie's about, coming yeah. in a year. It's like they didn't, they don't tell you that. No. Um, but you know, it's 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 like what you say. Uh oh, I have a baby fussing. Oh. <laughs> um, uh oh, okay, take over for a sec. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. How about that local sports team? No, uh, right. I hear they win more than they win. No, uh, so. The um, coming back to the sort of the the, the art of Star Trek in that. Mm. Sense. So, I mean, this is really like connecting at a level of both personal passion, but also, I mean, clearly, if you're going for, you know, looking for the palettes and the colors and the effects, mm -hmm. and the effects there's also a relation to sort of the filmic as an art medium that it seems like you're commenting on as well. Would that be Absolutely. Fair yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, 90s Trek, like, oh gosh, no problem. Oh, um, yeah. 90s Star Trek, you can look at a frame and it's pretty clear, you know, even if there's no, no recognizable characters in it, you can pretty well tell what period it's from, you mm. know. Um, even the either, episode. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, whether it's, whether it's, um, I mean, furniture, a wall, but also because of the quality of the film and, mm -hmm. you know, the way that the lights were, I mean, one of the things that, um, and again, I'm sort of jumping, but, but one of the things that I loved, loved, oh my God, I am, okay. I am obsessed with the art department um, from Star Trek Picard season three. Oh, obsessed. Um, I'm obsessed with that season of yeah. Picard as well. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things <laughs> that I'm particularly obsessed with is the recreation of the bridge. And not only that they did it and did it so well, but all of the extra steps they had to take to 
match to to create everything and make the colors work in the way that it worked that it looked on screen because am i explaining this well okay it's so different cameras and stuff it's just like exactly Right. Exactly. Was the wearing green, but it looked of, gold. Of Kirk's, yeah, of Kirk's. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Shirt. Yeah. So, so the color, the mm -hmm. color, and the lights that they're using now ended up making everything look wrong. If they, it, in terms of recreating '90s Trek, so right. in order to do that, they had to change lighting, and in some cases, even kind of adjust the color of what they were. Of what they were working on and especially the um the alcars panels i mean they did a whole bunch of stuff on the alcars panels even to the extent of putting like a little vignette around the edges so that it the leds that they were using didn't blow them out so much that they didn't look the way that they looked in the 90s it's just oh my god it's oh, so no. it's oh my god yeah, insane. Seeing, seeing, yeah. those, <laughs> seeing those okudagram alcars oh. things were just like it's like that's what i've been looking for the whole series right yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you can go home. <sighs> oh my yeah. Yes. But it's but it's you know, it's like you were saying about what's what's considered fine art and how things relegated to sci fi and comics yes. often aren't. But mm -hmm. isn't like I don't know, the the explanation I get from artists is oftentimes they're like, What is art? What makes great art? Mm -hmm. A lot of an artist say is it's like, Well, if it makes you feel something, mm -hmm. it's it's mm -hmm. it's good art. Mm -hmm. it? Or at least it's successful it's it's yeah. something well like but like these scenes like there are scenes from star trek deep space nine or even tng that i've seen a yes. hundred times and they still make me cry every time so absolutely having, like, a freeze frame of that like mm -hmm. that that that's cisco that cisco yeah. of that that is like the most one of the most meaningful things to me mm -hmm. like, there's few things i would rather like you know boats are nice I guess, <laughs> but, yeah like, Hey, I can just yeah. imagine Jenny storming out of NASCAR. You know what? I hate boats and just <laughs> yeah. Down with boats. Yeah. I actually, yeah. I, I actually just read a little, um, a little. Oh God, words, words, words. Um, thing someone said about something. Quote. There we go. There um, go. somebody that worked on DS Nine while the show was in in production, he had to go get something somewhere on the set and found himself right at the point sort of in in the promenade in the hallways where you couldn't see the ends of the set where you were just and all of a sudden uh, he, he said all of a sudden for one second i was on the station like i you know i i went oh, to the production yeah, office and awesome. and for that moment i was on the station and i I'm, i've got goosebumps saying it yeah but, me too I, but, that's the yeah. feeling i want to have i want right? to feel like i want to be and lines. and to have created a space like that that has that effect not just on the people watching the show but on the people who are working on the show yeah. like the the work that the art direction teams have done on these shows is mind-blowing you know and i think one of the things because of the strike last year there was a long period of time um where the actors and the writers couldn't talk about couldn't talk about the the show at all um and one of the good things about that was that the the production people actually got a chance to talk about what they did and and people were interested in hearing about it <laughs> and were blown away you know i mean i i'm i mean dave blass liz klikowski kit stolen um todd marks doug drexler that whole crew they the Okudas, oh my God! The oh, ooh. Um, yeah, like they, the work that they did, and the fact that they got to talk about it, and that people were, I don't know, like like I feel like I didn't watch Star Trek in the '90s, and I mean I knew some of those names because I had the technical manual, and I you know I had you know the the, the companion that Larry Nemechek wrote that's like you know got all the behind the scenes stuff, so I so so I knew some of that, but but. I don't feel like those departments get the appreciation. Exactly. Oh my God, that one. Yes, yes. Yes. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. my, my copy is upstairs right beside yep. the technical manual. Yeah. Like, this is all we had back in those days. Absolutely. 
but like I don't know how many like dog eared times I have gone through those things. Mm -hmm. And you know, in, in a similar way to something like um you know, a great score lift. Yes, yes. Uh the kind, you know, touching the aesthetic of um uh, a, a property, a, a franchise, a world like this. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's like David said, it, it is kind of like going home again, but it's like touching something that, um, that as, as, uh, as, as the alternate Cisco says is real. Yeah. Oh, Oh, what a nice way to put it. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, Speaking so, of that aesthetic, how about a little Rigel 7? Oh, come Ooh. on. Hey, now. I got one more. I got one more. Look that was awesome. Oh, fantastic. Look at, Look at like, that. Like, I, I thought they built these places because they didn't look like paintings mm -hmm. to me as a kid. I'm like, what are mm -hmm. these? Like, but anyway. <laughs> where have oh. they got it? Are, just, yeah, where, are they just where, in where, Belgium or something? Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Who knows? I thought Belgium yeah. was a magical place when I was a kid. <laughs> Belgium is a magical place. Well, oh, there you go. Fair enough. Sorry, Belgium. Or Belgium <laughs> listeners. Chocolate. Chocolate. That's right. Chocolate had nothing. Mm -hmm. Everything is fine. Wait, do they do clocks, too? Is this a, are they the clock people? Uh, that's not the Swiss. That's the Swiss. Too big on clocks, yeah. To be fair, I think my knowledge of Belgium comes from like an episode of Inspector Gadget or something. So, well, that's good because we're now segueing yeah. with European knowledge. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's quiz time. Um, <laughs> um, you know what? Maybe we should turn our attention to the art because you know I don't like. I don't think we see much of it, but the art within mm. the Star Trek universe. Ooh. Like the, um, maybe you have a keener eye for it than I have, but I'm, I try to, mm. I'm trying to think of examples of art we've seen. Like there's there's like pottery, like the Curlin Neskos. Yep. Yes. And, um, and there's certainly a um, lovely um, wavy glass piece that Data doesn't know where to put in his quarter. Yep. Yep. Right. Um, you know, Jordy's. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Data play paints a ton. I mean, there's a whole episode dedicated to like in painting birds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, and and I mean, music too. Music, music is massive in Star Trek. Um, one thing I, I I've really appreciated in Lower Decks is how they've taken some of those background art pieces that are you know in random quarters. And they've put them into the sets um, because because really I'm you know almost every almost everyone's quarters has some random sculpture. There's you know there's going to be some some painting ish thing on the wall. Um, what else? Picard's got that um, Mintakin tapestry. Tapest oh, yeah. tapest ta tapestry 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 sorry tapestry. that's when you make it yeah. with the tape yeah, yeah. tapestry the episode tapestries yeah. <laughs> um sorry, yeah. terribly Canadian joke I apologize no it's great <laughs> that's perfect there's also there's also fine collectors of art like myself like uh, you know mm -hmm. Fajo. yes um, <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> uh, not like yeah. myself I, I'm not mm -hmm. like Kivas Fajo. Um, I I hope not. <laughs> no, he's, he's the worst. He's yeah, the worst. Like I tried to rank him oh as an S tier villain on our villains ranking convention that we did. <sighs> I'm like, Kivas is the worst. And people are like, what? He's not. I'm like, no, he is. He's pretty bad, actually. Yeah, I mean, he's gonna you know? shoot that lady who was like his best friend. Oh like, yeah, he's, like, <laughs> he's not. Yeah. I mean, he's not he's a not war nice. criminal. He's not a war no. criminal. Because he was well, never in war. Deliberately no, <laughs> no, like he did. Mm chooses to be the way he is because he's but I mean, like, yeah. the world not to yeah. be. Yeah, and I mean, you know, and he also like poisoned the water in that other place to get the energy. Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Really. Kiva Sponjo sucks. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He's a Herbert. What a Herbert. He is a Herbert. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but he loves her. <laughs> um. He does. <laughs> That's true. He, 
terrible guy, but he loves. Oh my god! Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm so, joking. What's that quote from Monty Python? I don't know much about art, but I know what I like. That's Kivas Faja. Oh my um, god! There was this guy yeah. that used to come in. Um, this fellow who was pretty, um, pretty big on himself. Um, used to come into a bar that I worked at and he would talk about just whatever, what, you know, like traveling and wine. And, and he came in one time and he was just he was like, hmm, because art came up in some way. And he's like, I, I like art. I buy art. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Last time I was on the Riviera. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I bought three arts. Yeah, yeah three arts. I like art. I buy arts. Yeah. Where can I get an art? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> it, it, I mean, you make a wonderful point that, like, there is sort of there's a wide distribution of sort of ambient mm-hmm. art in yes. Star Trek backgrounds. You know, from from textile design. I mean, like Quark suits alone are mm-hmm. really long conversation Love probably, them. but you know, even the way you know the the Romulans' use of checked fabrics or or, mm-hmm. or very angular, sort of straight, sort of uh, Doric sort of lines. Mm-hmm. Um, the I mean, these things establish a tone so quickly, right? Yeah. Um, in that sort of you know, pictures say a thousand words sort of sense. So, um, how? I guess what I what I'm what I'm trying to trying to talk about is the sort of aesthetic of Star Trek and mm-hmm. what I'd say really stands out as the defining characters. Because for me, say for instance, the defining characters of say the Star Wars aesthetic, yeah, is like industrial components and mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> and yeah, just lived in and yeah. used and it's got scuff marks. Yeah, but that would not be how I would describe a, a Star Trek aesthetic. Say totally. Say, with the pack leads or in a couple of like rare cases. Mm-hmm. But so what what would you say would be sort of the defining aesthetic features of or defining features of a Star Trek aesthetic? I mean it's funny because because it really depends on the era. Um you know what species? The, what that too. That too, definitely. Um you know I mean I, I mean one of one of the common complaints about the new era of Trek is that it doesn't look and feel like either 90s trek or the original series um because it's colder and shinier and darker um Mm -hmm. so that in itself i mean definitely that kind of that kind of brighter i you know i I mean in terms of let's say star trek or star trek starfleet or um the you know federation you're looking at bright and clean and sort of minimalistic but not like uh, um austere you know um but one of the things actually as you were saying that i was thinking that was one of the things about d space nine that was such a like (gasps) because you go from the enterprise d the lap of luxury carpeted paradise to the beige queen we call her Yes, exactly. Very much <laughs> <home. Yeah. laughs> wrote in as a child. <laughs> exactly. Kind of, yes. Kind of like on a cloud. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Totally. And then you go to this new station where you have some recognizable Starfleet people, but you've got you know the the Bajoran officers in not the oh it's so gorgeous oh my god. Um, so she's so beautiful Jeez. oh you know you got Oda and one? brown yeah <laughs> they don't like the fat one John. yes yes exactly <laughs> they're wrong they are they're wrong. wrong yeah <laughs> they're wrong wrong um yeah so you know i mean I, I, pe- people are wearing bright colors um you know you go to deep space nine you've got you know Kira's wearing red, but you've got half of the station dressed in gray and brown. The station itself is, I mean, it grows on you. But when you first see it, when I first oh, yeah. saw it in 93, 93, 93, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It was, I was like, God, this is ugly. And the, the you know, the the Cardassian Elkars are ugly. 
and everything's broken and you know but that yes. but that established i mean that station is oh like it's it, oh, yeah. it's such a world unto itself um yeah like yeah. man it took me a long time to warm mm. up to deep space and that was my favorite mm. thing in life basically it's so good like, oh my god it's yeah, so good but, yeah but like i started watching voyager before i started watching deep space nine mm. yeah, mm -hmm. but but deep space nine it, it sucks you in and then it's like yeah, but you're like it it's really got, does like, it's got those broken grays and all these different kind of like kind of dirty tones and then you've got mm -hmm. and garrick yes <laughs> and they just stand out like like Mm -hmm. Yeah, colorful thumbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like you're, you're, you're sort of <laughs> thrust face first into like the Cardassian milieu, right? Yeah, and I think it, as a choice, it's really brilliant, but it's really mm -hmm. in the same way. Oh, and, uh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, it. Oh, like it was uncomfortable to. <sighs> It was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable to be there and hang out on that station if, if, at first. You know, you're watching O'Brien trying to figure it all out. It just, ugh, like, and, you know, especially after him having this, like, awesome, super, you know, transporter job and, like, solving problems and not getting... Boring transporter you know? job. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got his sleeves rolled up, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. that annoying doctor. God. <laughs> I, his exasperation with Julian carried me through much of it. It's the amazing. Time. Yeah, I was like, you and me both, my yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I love that line. It's like, look, when, when I first met you, I hated you. Yeah, and now he's like, and now what? He's like, now I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, there you go. Deep Space Nine, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, even you know, costuming wise, I understand why they decided to change the uniforms um, mm. from the TNG era. And again, costuming. There's another art form. Um, mm. You know, taking taking that comfortable two piece that we come to you know love so much and switching them into the like jumpsuits that were more utilitarian and less i mean less attractive initially 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 you know <laughs> it grows on you well yeah and especially after you watch seven seven seasons of voyager you're like okay all right yeah. jumpsuits work you know, yeah. and then and then going to Enterprise. Oh, and Enterprise is like a whole other art bonanza because you've got mm -hmm. you know you've got the like NASA style um, coverall mm -hmm. jumpsuits. Mm -hmm. You've got you know the like submarine like spaces that are you know built for trying to jam as much into as small a space as possible. Yeah. Everything's so metal. Oh. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, you, you never stub your toe on anything on the Enterprise. They've solved that <laughs> problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Or the Enterprise D, I mean. But the Enterprise, mm -hmm. NS, NS, yeah, the NX01. NX01. Yeah. It's stub toes everywhere. Yeah, you're going to hit your head and you're going to, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, <laughs> you're going to get electrocuted and you're. <laughs> Here it goes. Uh, They're all flying by. Yeah. Is that the refit or is that the. But she that does have one of the best deflector devices, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Like, What's that? Uh, the deflector dish on that Enterprise is maybe one of the best placements of any of them. Just right that up front nice, yeah. where yep. you might want a deflector dish. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Starship design, I suppose, is a whole other art. Of Absolutely. Um, honestly, yeah, talk to John me, Eves, I guess, about that. There, oh my God, yeah. That, um, that structured much of my early imagination as a kid. It was, um, and he's 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 a fair he's a well known spaceship artist. I guess this dude named Stuart Cowley. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know the name. Book Spacecraft Two Thousand to Twenty One Hundred A.D. Oh, and it is just one of the. I think I have it here in my mm -hmm. Google Drive. The the cover of the book here. Uh, let me just see if here I'll bring it up. Oh, it's not going to work, is it? That's oh, not going to work. Anyway, but yeah. it's it's one it's of like, the. That's not just, you. That's that's <laughs> not it. It's it's just one of the most wonderful books in that it gives you this sense of 
both the continuity of it with our world, which I think Star Trek also does, mm -hmm. but also shows these spaces and possibilities that are outside of our current grasp. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. but I think in some ways that kind of speaks to the human in us, that in one way we're inside our grasp in that we kind of know ourselves and whatever, but there's also so much of ah. each of us or our possible. There it is right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, bam. Let let the yellow shirt take care of it, Dave. Oh, <laughs> jump it. Right over to you. <laughs> That's perfect. Um, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. that, that is like one of my favorite books of all time. That's but, awesome. Uh, Oh, it's so right, good. Check it out, everybody. Oh, no, Dave recommends. Nice. Years ago, where you could mm -hmm. just barely get through the stacks. Yeah. Uh, so good. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but that, that sense of a kind of futurity, both mm -hmm. in ourselves and in the sort of world in general, seems to be part of the, the aesthetic of Star Trek. Whether we're like painting sort of uh, space structures or ships or, mm -hmm. or stations or that sort of thing. And since you paint Star Trek things often, what does it mm. feel like to paint the future? Mm. Good <sighs> question. Hmm. I mean, it, it. it's funny because it's the future, but it's also home mm. so well said yeah now mm. it's funny because because i've spent the last couple of weeks like i said painting deep space nine and one thing that's been really interesting as i'm kind of you know i'm kind of i'm working on these tiny little details and i'm really zoned in and i keep forgetting i keep thinking that i'm painting um star wars i keep thinking i wow. keep like mentally going to a galaxy far, far away, apparently. Um, <laughs> just something about the 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 shapes and the edges, especially on on, on Deep Space Nine. There's like the the little cutouts where the um, mm -hmm. the docking ports, um, mm -hmm. and there's all these like little doohickeys, and it's just it's it's really interesting because it's so much more about the metal and the you know when you look at at um, the starships the 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 Starfleet starships specifically, um, you know, they have plating and they have details, but it's different. It's, it's, it's smooth. It's, you know, it's pretty, it's, uh, you know, um, detailed, absolutely, but it's just different. Um, yeah. So it's just, I, I don't know. It's amazing, you know, not only just, you know, looking at those different, different ships, different designs, um, that they really are like characters in themselves. Like, like they're such an important part of creating those worlds, universes, like the, you know, I, I mean, yes, you know, you can look at like old episodes of Dr. Who, for example, and you know, where they've got no budget and they've managed to create a story that still works. It still works, <laughs> but um, having, artists creating sets and creating uh aliens and creating costumes for these you know for these properties for these shows for these universes just lets us live in them so much more um believably you know we have to do a little less like mental gymnastics to just mm -hmm exist in them and it's oh i'm just i, I i'm co constantly in awe of the people who the world builders the world builders you know yeah yeah mm -hmm. took a lot and, of people to build the star trek universe but yeah a, a very fine job of it mm -hmm. like, to me the romulan warbird is like the most beautiful oh, thing yeah like, <laughs> have mm -hmm. you painted a warbird yet? <laughs> I have not actually, and mm. and it's funny because because ships are, I'm 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 relatively new to doing ships. I mean, I I tend to be a portrait artist. Um, well, let me steer you toward the New Orleans class. Uh -huh. <laughs> no one wants to paint your New Orleans class, Dave. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, it's funny. Uh, 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 <laughs> once I yeah, once I finish Deep Space Nine, I'm actually doing the rebuilt Enterprise. That's the next the, the next painting I'm doing. 
Um, oh, wow. Yeah, like just about to go to warp. So it's the it's the galaxy class uh, saucer section with the with the star drive from the Syracuse. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh, and actually super cool. Cause, um, I, I worked, um, a friend of mine, uh, is a VFX artist who's done work on Star Trek. He, he, he worked on, um, some of the remasters for TNG. Oh, right on. Yeah. Um, so he was actually the one that helped me model the D space nine. Like, like, like he gave me basically a 3d high definition model of the oh wow to work from, which is which is why i'm able to pull the detail that i am um and he just helped me sort out the sierra prize we call it so we were looking at it we we're trying to match a specific scene and the model that he had at initially wasn't quite right because 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 there are some differences the syracuse star drive is like there's it like like the little yoke on top of the deflector is a little bit different. The deflector itself is different. The nacelles of the anyway, um, and then he was like, "Oh wait, I think I might." And then he looks up and he's like, "Oh yeah, Doug Dre Doug Drexler actually sent me the model that they used on the show. So so the painting that I'm doing is actually we were able to take the model that they used on the show and oh yeah. So oh, <laughs> like, uh, I'm like, I mean, the coolest thing that's ever happened." <laughs> That is amazing. Oh, yeah. I was wondering how you were getting that detail uh, on Deep Space. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. I've I've got some connections. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're getting the straight goods right there. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, this is wild, because because yeah, like those little details. And and actually, what's one thing that's really interesting to me because, like you say, there's there's all these different aspects of art in Star Trek. There's the art that the the characters create. There's the ambient art. There's the mm. you know the the production design, and everybody who's a fan has a different sort of what their area is. There's ship people. There's character people. There's tech people. You know there, uh, and there's uniform it, people like my cousin absolutely. Dave. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. We just ranked them all. Mm, oh my god! Oh, that's so amazing. <laughs> And I mean, it's, like yeah, one separate uniforms or something like that. That's it's incredible. Yeah, we did that's that. actually wild. So that's that's insane. <laughs> we were out of here. Yeah. Mm. But it's it, it's really important to me if I'm going to paint if if I'm going to paint ships and stations, those are going to be for the ship people, and they need to be like they need to be bang on as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Like I I just yeah. that that is like something I feel like I owe. I owe it to the ship people, you know? As a ship person, <laughs> let me just say. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Well, I that's have your audience. Like, who's going to buy a ship uh, painting, right? It's people who love the ships. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like me. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> and it's also, it's so cool. Like, you know, just, just you know, people... It's so interesting to me, just the way that, um, you know, you go to an art museum and somebody will love the Monet and somebody will love the Van Gogh and someone will love the Warhol. It's, the, you know, again, with the, the uniforms, the ships, everybody's got like their own taste, their own. Some of us love the X-Men. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I no, I'm absolutely one of those yes. that's like trapped by like battles of like Cadiz, like the Bay of Cadiz. And I'm like, oh, my God, yes. look at that. Mm -hmm. That's mm. got eighteen pounders on it. Oh, yes. Geez. Yeah. Exactly. No, I mean, yeah, mm. you're, you're so right about that. Yeah. I could not agree more from a art consumer's perspective. Mm. Uh, and I think I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, these Star Trek. I mean, I, I mean, there are other there are other universes, but like this is the universe. Star the Star Trek universe is so immersive and so. There's so much for everyone. I talk about it like it's mm. it's Star Trek is a buffet, you know, mm. and there is something for everyone on it. And I may not want what's over there, but I definitely want this bit. And mm, and and it there's so much variety. Oh, infinite diversity by uh, in, in infinite, <laughs> infinite combination. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. But that applies across across the board, I think. 
It does. Um, and I think that's kind of what we're doing here on this podcast mm. with these themes. It's just like there's, yeah. I, I figure there's no theme I can come up with that we can't shine Star Trek through effectively. I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and vice versa, because we're, you know, we're trying to get there. We want to, you know, we've only got a couple centuries to go and we kind of want to steer mm-hmm. ourselves towards that future. Exactly. Well, as, yeah. as we were, as we were noting last week, we're only what, uh, 39 years away from it's true. Three. Mm-hmm. Fifth, Isn't that so crazy? We have a lot of work to do to get uh, a fully functional warp drive in that time. Yep. Yes, we do. And if you think those Vulcans aren't going to judge us, you haven't been watching Star Trek. Because exactly. they are. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. They are going to be gatekeepy AF. You know? <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah. <laughs> we love them, but yes, they are. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to have like, opinions. They're like Deep Space Nine. The Vulcan's got to grow on you. Yes. Like, yeah, that's definitely. Crazy. Oh, my God. Yeah. So that's, so what, this year? Is it this year that we just have to get through the bell riots? And then... Was right. it this year? Oh, 2024, 2024 wasn't it? Bell riots, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. crap. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I don't live in one of those uh, sanctuary yeah. districts. Right? Yeah. Right? I mean, Whew. honestly. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we avoided that. <laughs> yeah, so, so far. far. It's not 2024 is not over yet. What am yeah. I saying? Like, no, said, <laughs> <laughs> There's still a bunch of 2024. Oh, yeah. There oh, is. Yeah. What was I thinking? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, you know oh, for me, it would be very that. hard like to narrow down the moments I would want to paint if I were you because I remember you and I were just chatting about Deep Space Nine once mm-hmm. and I was just like how do I not blow up Jenny's messages here with like a hundred suggestions from Deep yes. Space Nine because it's yeah. like cause, yeah it's it would be so hard how do you do mm-hmm. it how do you narrow it down I mean lately it's been people have com- been, been, been commissioning moments which has oh, been gosh. which has been <laughs> nice yeah like because yeah. it's saving me choosing um, because I actually, my list now is so big that I like just trying to narrow it down. I mean, I know, I know I want to make a data painting. I know that. Um, but what moment, doing a painting you know, of data doing a yeah, painting. Uh, exactly. Right. Exactly. You know, <laughs> I want to paint Kirk, but what era Kirk, what episode, what movie, mm, you know, it's, um, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I remember, like, there's there's so much possibility, right? Like yeah. there's nothing a triptych of Ardra in various forms. Oh or, like, all sorts of crazy <laughs> That's amazing. Things. Yes. Yeah. It's like so if no, I... say what you really want to say, Dave. Have you ever thought of painting a Romulan commander? Ooh. <laughs> mm. Mm. Nameless Romulan commander. Nice. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> in another universe mm. we could have been friends. <laughs> oh i love that yeah oh my god There's so many it, it's mm. so hard i mean the last one the last one that i chose because because i have done um several commissions was yeah. the poker game from picard yeah um and that was i mean that was like a no-brainer for me that was you know that um, one will be b- b- behind here <laughs> soon enough oh yay awesome yep it's uh yeah i didn't realize how was... many star trek ones you had though so um, i don't know um, i'm just gonna have to get it's a, been growing collection of, yeah i might have to downsize size so I can, like, <laughs> yeah i'll have the smaller ones circling the big mm-hmm. ones because i'm gonna need the biggest size of your deep space nine Ah, yes, yes. Um, yeah, so I'm Deep Space Nine. I've got the Enterprise D coming. I just got commissioned actually to do, interestingly enough, the uh, the view of Starfleet headquarters from home front. So, which is cool because it's got a matte painting, but it's also uh, mm-hmm. the real building. Plus there's a model attached to it as well. So it's like a, so it isn't just me recreating a matte painting. Um, yeah, and I'm just I'm just really excited about that because it's going to be closer to Christmas at a time when I'm going to be ready to just do something like landscapey and you know kind of chill. I'm I'm excited about that. Right on. Yeah. If if I ever had like was a billionaire, I would have a I would I mean I would be I'd give the money away if I was a billionaire. <laughs> but you know, say uh, say yeah. a millionaire even or, mm-hmm. uh, more well off than well, I. Well, if you had I would have a, I would have a like, if we uh, were each room would be like Star Trek matte paintings. 
and you oh could walk God. in and you could yeah. be on Rigel 7. Yeah. Or, yeah mm-hmm. That would be amazing. I've always dreamed of it. just reminded me about we all we all live in the the sort of it sounds like HRM ish area. Yeah. The Athens on Quinpool Road. Do you remember that? It used to have yes. like things of like the Greek countryside. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, I uh, would yeah, love I that. worked there. <laughs> oh, really? I was a, oh, I was a cook there. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you really know those paintings. <laughs> oh that's awesome (laughs) and that folks is how small halifax is there you go (laughs) if if you spend enough years in the restaurant scene you've worked Mm -hmm. in small and halifax that is a fact i'm no longer in such a scene me neither i'm seven years out i mean i mean honestly getting out of bartending was the reason that i was able to start doing this full time because yeah yeah, the old the old restaurant lifestyle does not lend itself to getting much done outside of the restaurant, you know. No, it doesn't. <laughs> so I hear, yeah, yeah, Mm-mm. yeah, yeah. Well, but, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, no, again, I I was looking at some of those matte paintings um, mm-hmm. just just today. Oh my god, Ooh. Mm. and I can just scroll through these. I, I, they're just I gonna, yeah. like they're so gorgeous they're you know especially the ones you know um later n- not later on but but in the original series they're static in some of the ones in, in uh, tng they started incorporating little like little effects and digital stuff mm-hmm. um which is just cool in itself i'm always really interested in how they make that happen oh and actually did they do uh, that before the remasters uh they did yeah yeah oh, okay oh, really? yeah yep yeah, yeah in some cases the, that blew me about the original series remasters that they've done a lot oh, of those oh yeah movies. yeah and the backgrounds just make it pop alive absolutely a- mm-hmm uh, it, it really benefited from it. One thing I thought was really interesting because I was I, I was just on Memory Alpha, like just kind of you know matte paintings. Just, you, mm-hmm. you can punch anything into Memory Alpha, and there you will really be can. an entry for it. It's crazy. Um, and they were talking about in Voyager, in the opening of Voyager, the ice moon that it passes oh, yeah. mm-hmm. is actually a matte painting that they took and put on a 3D model. So it's like a skin. It's a 2D matte painting that they what? turned into a 3D. Yeah, I know. I didn't know that. I just found that out today. And that's super cool. I would have thought that was entirely <laughs> CGI. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so the way that they can take, like, uh, you know, textures and map it onto a 3D model, that's what they did with it. But it was actually a painting to start with. That's I maintain there's still a sweet spot between CGI and practical effects. Like, there's yeah. this perfect blend of the two that still exists yeah. that doesn't get used very often. Mm-hmm. But, like, going Honestly, full CGI does leave things cold, I find. Yeah. And, and you are limited by fully practical, but there's this mm-hmm. sweet spot. The um yeah. the AR wall that they've you that, that that they're using on Discovery and on Strange New Worlds yeah. is kind of both ish because it I mean they're digital paintings. They are digital paintings that they're using, but they are paintings or they are, you know, two dimensional things that they've mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's crazy because because I, they're able to incorporate, you know, those those effects and things that we were talking about that they might, you know, that they would have put in afterwards. Um, you know, say like if it's the engine, you know, you've got like stuff happening. Um, but it's it's an interesting evolution of what matte paintings are and how they're used, and because it's still it's not a set it's not a set and it's not something that they're green screening in you know there it's something that lets the actors exist in that space in a way that they don't necessarily always get to you know that they get to sort of yeah. interact with it in a it's right there it's it, it's I, I don't know it's really it, it's really interesting to me like at some level it's still like logically, it still feels like that functions like the old like Tom style of painting. Yeah, right. Like the way you mm. like paint in 
more detail on the marble on the staircase or like painted mm -hmm. desk that was photorealistic enough that you're like, holy crap, why are those? Yeah. Off? Oh, right, it's on a wall and it's painting. Yeah. You know, there, there's something there that is like the 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 illusion actually supports the reality. Yeah. In some sense, right? Mm, like, absolutely. It, it's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the fact you know the, the the Strange New Worlds engine room is a set that's this deep, and then the AR wall <laughs> is the rest of the <laughs> engine room. It's just it's. It's wild. Like it's it, it's just such an interesting use of that and a way to 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 make that world more real, you know, to make mm. this the scope of the engine room be as big as they want it to be. Um, I just it's it's really cool. And actually when they went back to Rigel 7, I thought they did a really great job recreating that. Like like recreating the feel of this. I thought, you know, they used the AR, the AR, AR wall but they managed to keep that, you know, stage matte painting feeling. It was just, yeah, really, it's really cool. Look at this moon. Can you imagine right? the tides on Rigel 7? Like, <laughs> oh, my God, have yeah. a huge yeah. surfing mm -hmm. culture, I bet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those Rigelians. Yeah. Oh Big surfers. Yeah, <laughs> you're here me. first on Locutors of yep. Trek. That's right. Um, <laughs> That's right. They got a pretty good tidal bore going on up there, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, did, is there anything about Star oh, Trek that's God. particularly difficult oh. with oil, oil painting? Hmm. hmm. I mean, not any more than anything else although to be fair i haven't painted the enterprise yet and i know it's going to be challenging because of the just the shapes like like those those i mean i, I mean d space nine has so many ellipses yeah exactly there yeah see look at all those ellipses like it's mm -hmm. mm, and try and you've got to they all have to be yeah. right they all have to be so there's a technical aspect to doing Especially doing ships, you know. I mean, it's it's different. So many it's windows. <laughs> so oh my god, so many windows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, gonna be sick and drawing windows. The deep I'm space gonna be. I'm gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. After <laughs> after yeah after this and after the Enterprise, what am I doing after that? I'm painting. Um, oh, I'm painting the shawarma scene from Avengers. Oh, um, oh wow! Yeah, that's so one. that's gonna give me a break from windows. Although I'm gonna be pretty sick of that one by the time I'm done with it too. <laughs> So there's a lot in that picture. Anyway, busy scene. How would you? Yeah. How would you? Or would you? How would you translate like lower decks to your art? Could you ever do that? Could you do it like a lower decks painting? It's funny. Like, I, 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 I don't like recreating photographs. Gives me a challenge in a way, and, and I'm. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I, I'm torn about the animated series specifically because it feels like I'm just taking like like I'm literally just making a copy of someone else's drawing. drawing. You know, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if the right. Could you put like a realism spin on it, or maybe? Well, uh, like... Yeah, yeah, oh, no. yeah. That I think also. One thing I don't do a lot of is is making composites, like like you know putting people in different places, and I feel like lower decks would lend itself more to that kind of you know. So actually, that's a yeah, that's a thought right there. Hmm. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's one of the things we noted mm -hmm. the other day when we were doing the uniform review is that the actual live action version of those <gasps> uniforms we saw mm -hmm. was good, but it was not wholly accurate. Absolutely, yeah. Part, you mm -hmm. know, particularly on the, right. the shoulder pieces and a bunch of things. So, like, there's there's bits of getting to that sort of natural realism stage. Yes, that se seemed like they would propose particular challenges from. As opposed mm -hmm. to the other direction, photorealism to natural realism in a painting, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I think, yeah, like like that, yeah, that to me, it's sort of the, 
I want it to be more of a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, but, but because I am a realist painter, I'm not pulling stuff out of my head. So, you know, creating a live action Lord X piece. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. May not be my jam. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, yeah, <laughs> but I mean that's part of defining your your practice as an artist. It is, yeah. Figuring out really how you're gonna, how you would or if you would approach those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's funny. There have been a number of people who have wanted me to paint them into scenes. Uh, um, that's a very common, not common, but it's it it's a more frequent request than you would think. Um, but because how many from Seth McFarlane? <laughs> <laughs> and not that I know of, but you know <laughs> that dark hair that dark one wouldn't be so difficult, actually. Yeah, there you go. that one wouldn't be so hard. I think I can rustle up a couple of uh, <laughs> a couple of shots of that. You know? <laughs> I'm sure. Um, yeah, sure. We, uh, we look. I'm just jealous. We've all wanted our own Star Trek show. Absolutely. <laughs> that is a fact. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, well, geez. where else do we go here? Do we have anything yeah. else to say here about the art of Star Trek? I want to give a quick shout out to Matt Jeffries. Okay. Who... Of the Jeffries Tubes fame? Of the Jeffries Tubes fame, who who mm -hmm. basically was the architect of the whole thing. I mean, he was the one who sat down and did hundreds of drawings of starships for Gene Roddenberry to, you know, finally get signed off on, you know, that what became the Constitution class. Um, but he also designed um, the the interiors too. I mean, he designed, so, so he designed the visual language that Star Trek is built on and um, deserves a lot of credit for that. I think, no you know, kidding. how about mm -hmm. establishing a, 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 an aesthetic like that? Eh? Wow, yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. You know, I think, I think the art of Star Trek, um, it is, so much about like like we talked about about that world building and about creating a visual language you know whether it's you know the federation starfleet other alien worlds alien ships but something that all works together and lets you live in that in that universe and it's incredible what's what's see that's another thing that interests me mm. about too is the different styles of each of the alien species yeah. they can even they even kind of adhere to as like you know generations go by in these mm -hmm. things like you know you can see the design lineage between the early klingon stuff to where it ends up and like yeah i find that very interesting is there an alien uh species aesthetic that you find particularly interesting I mean, definitely the Klingons, um, just, you know, seeing not only just, you know, I mean, I, I mean, obviously they're, they're like military uniforms, but mm -hmm. the, as, as next generation went on, we saw more and more, um, uh, like, like civilian clothing in the Klingon empire mm -hmm. and that, um, gosh, just, Oh, it's so good. And the, you know, the weapons, like, like Dan Curry, the stuff that he created for it. Um, yes, exactly. Exactly. The Batleths, the Macleths, the, yeah. The Duck Dogs. The yes. Everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, and, yeah. and like you say, you know, the Romulans, God, the Cardassians, oh, like that just industrial creepiness. Um, you know. Well, I mean, Romulus is just gray. The walls are gray. The people are gray. You know, even the Romulan heart is gray. The secrets are gray. <laughs> They're all gray. That's intentional. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. yes, it's true. No one will suspect you if you're wearing gray. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I mean, it's... Which color there is. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's uh, like there's there are so many. I don't know, and it's been interesting through the years, you know, watching watching that evolution and seeing uh, how those those original designs, like you say, for the Klingons, for the oh the Vulcans. Oh God, they're the like Ferengi. That's not yes, awesome yes. Awesome designs. Absolutely, yeah, exactly, and and just the way that they've evolved over the years, you know, and and contributed to what we know and what we feel about those about those species and about those worlds. Um, again, because art is an in integral part of not just human, but I think I don't know life like. Where is their where is their life that there's not art? No, and all of a sudden you had me thinking of everything from birds' nests to spider webs Ooh. to uh, to the patterns on tree leaves. Right? Yeah, and yeah. That 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 sense of expression is mm -hmm. an exquisite expression in that sense, right? Like yeah. it's, it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah, and it's integral. And I think Star Trek's a really good example of that. It's it's integral to to making a world feel lived in, you know, it, it uh, yeah, like, mm, mm -hmm. like you just can't, you can't create a, a ship in space that people live on and not fill it with people things, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, even shape it the way your people shape things. That's one of yeah. the things I love about it, right? Like, mm -hmm. There are a few, like that wonderful triangular thing that's a Lesepian ship, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, you know, the, the outrageous Arcona ship, and it's everybody's yeah. culture at some point. There are a few stand bog standard industrial designs. Yeah. When you get to the real expressions of what people think, this is us in space. Yeah. They really look remarkably different. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I mean that that I don't I don't see how people wouldn't do that unless they just had a culture that was like well boxes are fine for space yeah i mean i, I suppose and, and they do that that's the board i suppose yeah yeah I, I, I mean that's interesting in itself because i mean uh, aerodynamics isn't a problem in space so like of course the board would not worry about it but why a cube it's just it's just really that in itself is really it, like why why a cube Borg? tell us about the cube like what what makes the cube better than a pyramid or you know well they have the diamond <clears throat> they do have the borg diamond in the borg yeah, sphere. They, they, they love they love the platonic solids sort of mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah shapes yeah uh, i mean to their credit they're not very like brittle because they're so thick and chunky. Like I you totally. look at a Klingon ship and you're like, one shot and you're done, Brent, right? What are you thinking? <laughs> yeah, like a little whoop. Yeah. But, you know, it's just a glorious death. That's what they want to do. Yeah, but, exactly. But like it, like the Borg like would never fly around in something like paper thin in one particular spot on the ship. Because that would totally. make no sense to the Borg. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. So, why yeah. the cube? Like, why would the shape matter to them at all? You're right. Mm. Why is it not just like Mass. Yeah, why isn't it just mass. exactly? Yeah, yeah, like just a mission. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They need yeah, a I mean, component, they just stick it on there. Mm -hmm. But again, it's it, it says something about them. It's yeah, um, you're right. Yeah. There's more than just the random, the arbitrariness of function. There is yeah. some fundamental aesthetic to the Borg that's about the sort of regular mm -hmm. party and order. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, even if it's all about just having redundant systems all over the place. And, uh, you know, just sort of having, like, things be mirror images of other things to just, you know, have the same ship a hundred times. Mm -hmm. It still mm -hmm. manifests in the form of a cube, and that's interesting. Like Honestly, that, that still sounds very important. We'll <laughs> yeah. just play around with a hundred. <laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, like, like 709 hinted at with the Omega Particle, like, there's a certain amount of, like, uh, something about mass mathematic aesthetics, at least, that the Borg appreciate. Mm hmm yeah yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so, oh i love that yeah yeah in infinite what are they what does she say infinitely infinitely harmonious but infinitely complex mm -hmm. the yeah. Particle, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, oh that's great yeah 
Yeah. Paging the Omega Particle. There's a challenge. Oh. Did you see it? For a Good heavens. You do. You do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I want to paint, see, I'm, I want to paint the things. entire inside of the Dyson Sphere. <clears throat> the, you know, I'll do my life's idea. work. <laughs> Why a sphere? See, it's, these are the questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because they got to close it around the sun. You know, yeah, that's true. No, no, it's just nature was just like, oh, yeah, make it a circle. It'll be great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like a planet, only the inside. It's great. The, no the Dyson rectangle just sounds mm -hmm. like. <laughs> You're gonna get into trouble. You, you got something stuck in that corner there. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Hmm. Well, well, where can people find you, Jenny? Ah, well, not just your art, but your podcasting venture as well. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, I'll start with that. I am. Um, I host on Virtual Trek Con, um, on Tuesday and Friday nights. I am a co-host. I should say I host. I'm not the like. I'm not the one. Anyway. Don't worry. I call um, myself the yeah. host all the time, and it's never just me. <laughs> Nice. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm on the main viewer talking about Star Trek news uh, live every Tuesday night uh, at nine o'clock uh, Atlantic time. Um, and on Friday nights, it's Star Trek and chill. Same time, 9 p.m., 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, and it's just Star Trek and chill. We talk about if there's stuff going on, we'll talk about it. Otherwise, we just kind of, you know, we've got we've got a little trivia. We've just got it's a hangout. It's fun. Um, and in addition to that, you can also find me on Nerdiest Prime, um, which is another podcast because I really like talking about Star Trek. <laughs> so, yeah, um, so I do, um, we've been doing uh, reviews of TNG. We're going to do um, a kind of like condensed discovery review session. Um, and in terms of me and my art, you can find basically everything you can find through my website, JennyRJohnson.com. Um, but I'm all over social media on Twitter. If you're still there, you can find me at Jenny R. Johnson. But if everywhere else, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, threads, whatever, I'm Jenny R. Johnson art. You just reminded me of a funny Star Trek meme. You know, there's always those ones with George. Mm -hmm. and he's just like, oh, yeah. He's just like, he's just like dead naming people. He's like, dead naming Twitter. He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so funny. <laughs> I love that those Jordy memes. They're like there's a lot I of know. good Trek memes. Like there's the the Picard and Riker one where it's always Oh my god, the joke yeah, the jokes so are the the Jellico jokes. Oh my god, yeah. they kill me. I love them so much. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty great. Mm -hmm. Jellico's great. I mean he's, he he's is. underappreciated. He is. But, he's a good captain. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. You should he's have been there on our captain's friend. ranking he's convention. Just, like, he's just not their captain, you know? No, he's not their captain. Yes. Yeah. They don't know how to get it done. And he exactly. wants to get it done. Get it done. Four shifts. There are four shifts. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, oh, definitely God. check out all of those things Jenny mentioned. And mm -hmm. if you still haven't got your Trek picks, you check out uh, the stuff we've got going on over here yeah. on Live Long and Podcast. Look, there's our handsome crew there and our four divisions in our command division. We They do our uh, episode reviews over there in the red. And uh, then we do our Star Trek Radio Theater over in the ops division and, you know, video games and that sort of thing. And in the science division that I, I uh, run with an iron fist, we do... Uh, <laughs> We do our Debate Nine show. Mm -hmm. We do, uh, what do we have here? We've got Trouble with Trivia. We do. <laughs> Trouble with Trivia is a fun show. We've recently just had on um, uh, a, a quite quite the matchup between myself, Adam Woodward, and Mark Cartier from the Oh, show. nice. Yep. Yep. Mark's a uh, tri trivia buff big time. Oh, yes. He, mm -hmm. he, he shows up. He's just like, oh, I'm expecting to lose. And like 10 minutes in, he's just like, I don't oh, yeah. yeah. You all. He's dominating. He's like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, it, uh, I won't spoil the ending, but go check that right. out. But you know what? There's going to be a rematch on a different battleground. Uh, so I'm not going to spoil awesome. the ending, but the same three competitors are going to be in our next debate nine. 
Fantastic. Fantastic. A wonderful statement. Yeah. I won't spoil the, the ending, but there will be a rematch. <laughs> there will be a revenge. <laughs> Two people are out for a blood revenge nice. against the other, and I'm not going to say who's who. <laughs> Go watch the trivia and then watch Amazing. the Eight Nine Revenge Edition. Because uh, uh. that's going to be... <laughs> it's, I'm spoiling it, aren't I? Well, like you, you know, you can piece it together, people, but check it out. And you know, of course, we did do our uniform forum recently, and you know, we've ranked captains, we've ranked villains, we've ranked that's so great you know, we ships. We ranked the ships. We mm-hmm. do a convention every now and then when we get together. That's we true. Rank things into S tiers and I love A-tiers that and F tiers. I don't know what's next. We'll see. We even made a double F for some of the uniforms last time. Oh, yeah. I don't know how I felt yeah, about the double hard. F. Category. Nice. You know, it happened. It happened right in front of we my eyes. We need to break it out. We had we had a yeah. huge amount of opprobrium to share. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there was not a lot of love for a couple of archers outfits on the panel. Oh so my I was, god! I wasn't. I wasn't as uh, harsh on them as some. Oh but, my uh, god! <laughs> <laughs> like like oh, archers. Was archer. Awesome. What was it? It was archers like formal wear, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Dave was practically angry. The, the, he, was like, he was so irritated by them. Yeah, he's like, look at this. Oh my god. This is terrible. It was yeah. great. Mm-hmm. He, he, our he's our resident. Uh... Is his finest. But yeah, I... then, you know, kick out. Uh... Oh, go ahead, Jenny. Oh, no, I was going to say, I watched the, the motion picture again recently, and the. <sighs> the. The. Absolute cluster that is the uniforms in that movie i mean aside from just the 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 logistical issues we'll call them um you know what each one means who is wearing what although all of bones um uniforms in that movie actually all of his clothing in that movie is uh, disco bones is not oh, disco bones. Bones is great He's got those. He got those. Wow! Oh my God! The deep V's on every every single top. Yeah. Some, some chesties sticking out. Some new oh. chest hairs. Yeah. yeah, bones. Actually, you know what? Favorite character, bones. There you go. Mm-hmm. Bones is a good pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, his cameo <laughs> in TNG. Oh. Is one of the most poignant scenes. It's just so beautiful. Every time I cry. Every time. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Treat her good and she'll bring you home. That one, treat, treat her like a lady. Yeah, yeah, treat her like yep. a lady. And she'll mm-hmm. bring you home. Oh, mm-hmm. that is a good one. Yeah, bones. Yeah, bones. <laughs> mm-hmm. They always overlook the times then they like trash their ships. Just like, yeah, we don't always bring the ship home, but yeah. she'll always bring you home. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and if you know, you, you know, you get tired of. Star Trek for a moment, just a moment. We have other podcasts okay. on our net. I mean, it'll never happen. But if so, you know, get your X Men podcast in. Yeah, Amazing. Like the X Men animated review show. Amazing. Or, uh, or you know, here's some interviews with people in comics, film, and whatnot over at the Graphic Histories podcast. Most recent one, an interview with uh, the creator of Roger Rabbit, Gary K. Wolf. So check that out. Yes. Um, and of course, we have hold up a movie podcast. The next one is on bikes, bicycle movies. Check that out as Amazing. well. This is yeah. We have a bit of a network over here called I love called it the U- the United Federation of Podcasts. That's fantastic. Yes, and <laughs> this, they have Super Mater Brothers. They do reality show reviews. Aiming on track. If you want to talk <laughs> about music, <laughs> trivial debates. Wow. We, uh, yeah, that's a fun one. Yeah, you're welcome on uh, any of these Trek things you mentioned uh, or anything else that piques your fancy. Well, thank you. Yeah. And of course, we the Hellbound podcast with Alex Blackburn and Michael Chan, and I don't have their logo, but the newest member of our federation. Hey, did you see this one? I think they actually have an episode going on right now, live on the internet. Oh, so good. But I'm glad you're all here instead. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> but that's it. Uh, any any final words from anyone? About the art of Star Trek or anything else? Mm. Yeah, it's just, I mean, the art, the art, the art builds the worlds. It's, Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it literally builds the worlds so that we can hang out in them and, yeah, live in them. And it's, uh, 
so important and so awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, one more question for you before oh, we go. Yeah. Because I don't think you've done one yet. What, <laughs> what, is a, what as a scene from Strange New World so far has stuck out to you that you'd like to take? Mm. Mm. Um, ooh, mm, mm, mm. ooh, hmm. They, there's so many great images. They, the colors and the sets are, oh, they're just so, oh, so like, colorful. so, sh yeah, so mm. sharp and like, oh, um, oh, gosh. A single scene um actually you know what probably something from um those old scientists probably uh, speaking of oh, the yeah. speaking of the, mm -hmm. the lower decks um just because there's some just really great there's really great moments in that in that in, 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 in that episode spock peeking out after uh, <laughs> exactly exactly that that hugo nominated episode incidentally oh, yeah oh, really? yeah oh, wow yeah yeah, so I yeah prob probably, but oh god, there's just it's I, I, again because of that AR wall and because of the way that they've just the aesthetic that they've created. They're um you know when they're on planets, there's some really really cool stuff happening. When they're on the ship, there's some really really cool stuff happening. So um yeah, even I mean even like even their bar is gorgeous. Mm. It's gorgeous. Pike's quarters are the most gorgeous. Oh my thing god! I've ever seen. Like oh, Pike cooking. Oh, I need to do a Pike apron. Ooh, yes, I'm oh, writing that down right now. That's yeah. a good one. <laughs> if I ever find some time. <laughs> yeah. Jambalaya with the place in Paris. Yeah. I mean, we've all agreed it's kind of insane. Mm -hmm. They're a gorgeous swanky pad. Yeah. They're yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I would like on a starship. If I it's had. yeah. Like I feel like they've done such a good job there tying the TOS a a aesthetic into this sort of mm. newish, yeah, like except for Pike's quarters, because if you see what Kirk's quarters look like well, after yes. that, he inherits yes. that ship and then he gets a closet and like <laughs> it's, which is smaller than Pike's kitchen. Board there. Yeah, it's a minimalist refit. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Like too it's much such a good kitchen. I just want his kitchen. It's better than mine. Oh my kitchen. god! I know, right? Mm -hmm. Ugh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is one gorgeous. Most room. of mine are probably around Mbenga. They're all more serious on that show, oh, but I love Mbenga. Like that yeah. one from, um, oh, um, Under the Cloak of War. Mm -hmm. where, where that Pike comes and confronts him if he killed Daka. He says like, "No, but I'm glad he's dead." And just that yeah. look between them is. Like he's been like he's kind of like leaning back. Oh, yeah, like so good. Oh man, so good. He's a yeah, character. yeah. He really is. He really is. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm. So I'm really happy with what they're doing on that Me show. Too. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. I look forward to the Jenny Johnson uh, Strange New Worlds art. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> you can make an art. <laughs> I can I, make an art, no problem. I buy an art. Yeah. I like art. I buy art. <laughs> well, oh, I guess there's God. only one thing left to say. And transmission.